Uh, the time, anyway, no, all right, it's fr- Friday, September 17th at 5.45 p.m. in uh, Berlin time. You're listening to Eric on the World. I am your host, Eric, and you guys, you're in for a treat because I have another guest back here <laughs> in the studio that is my temporary Berlin bedroom. Um, Berlin comedian Rob Moriarty is here. Did I say that right? That's perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, great. Nailed it, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rob, uh, I actually, I think I met you in the fall. I don't think I met you, but I saw you at the wall, mm. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had like a brief stint here and then had to skedaddle and found mm. my way back here. But uh, Rob is a very, you're a very funny oh, comedian. Likewise, man. Oh, uh, and uh, you, how recently did you move to Berlin? Um, So I moved over in... July last year. July of 2020? 2020, and then I stayed until the fall. Yeah. And then they went back into lockdown here, so then I said, fuck, I'll just go home. Yeah. So I went home and was planning on coming back in the new year if they opened in the new year, but everywhere stayed in lockdown until the start of summer. So I just said, I'm just going to wait until it opens up. And then the minute I got told, okay, we're opening on the whatever, the 4th of June, 1st of June, whatever it was, I just got on a plane and came over but i'm lucky i just i don't have anything tying me to home i don't have a job i don't have you know yeah yeah so i'm lucky <laughs> like I many just, berliners here yeah. yeah like i don't have i didn't have i think a lot of people like comedians back home in ireland were you know seeing me go over here and ditching everything and were probably like fuck i'd love to do that but like a lot of these people they just they had like proper career jobs or whatever yeah so it wouldn't exactly be easy for them to just i was just lucky i was able to just fucking drop everything and and go yeah do you do you have like a permanent apartment here no i'm so i'm living (laughs) i'm living in a room about this big and i'm sharing it with two other guys really yeah yeah it's like a fucking dorm yeah it's gross (laughs) dude it's so bad in the past week one of the guys um has had his girlfriend staying with us. Yeah. And I have no idea why a girl would agree to that. Like yeah. sharing a room with two stri- like two other guys along with her boyfriend. Yeah. And she's there and it was super fucking annoying because when there's a girl in the room, you can't, you know, you can't walk around in your fucking underwear. You can't, yeah. you know, you have to be kind of conscious of certain things, you know. Um, and then it was just like, you need to take a shit, you need to take a piss or take a shower and she's in there and you're like you're not even supposed to be here like what the fuck are you doing yeah i'm just like one extra person in a situation where it was already crammed could you so, like force the issue though and be like no i am gonna fucking walk around in my underwear yeah, like, yeah, yeah i mean yeah. honestly it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Is she is is it is there like is she paying any rent or no anything? no no and he kind of was like uh, framed it as like um i think he's french i think he's french and he was like uh, do you mind if my uh, it's my birthday? Can my girlfriend come over for like uh, a few days? And I was in the middle of doing something, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's another guy who I live with. His name is Billy. He's from fucking Indonesia, and he, uh, I'm pretty sure he's like, he's not all there because he just <laughs> he's a hermit. Like he's a fucking hermit. He never leaves the room. He plays computer games all day. That's horrible. Mm, he never leaves the room. Um. So, uh, and he probably hadn't seen a woman in fucking years. So he was like, oh yeah, no, of course that, that's fine or whatever. Yeah. Um, so then jacking she, off. To yeah, like yeah, 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 <laughs> dude. I was, um, he was very enthusiastic about having a female move into the room. <laughs> but, um, she, so she came and then it just rolled into like a week. And I was like, fuck this. And I just snitched on him. I'm not usually a snitch, yeah. but I was like, I have to get this fucking girl out of here yeah and if i i feel like if i confront him face to face i have to live with this prick for the next whatever and so i just went to the landlord and i was like hey i'm not particularly proud of this but i was like hey this fucking guy is his girlfriend staying here it's fucking like it's just whatever and then i was like can you keep this confidential or whatever and she was like yeah yes of course and then yeah the next day she was gone but um damn that was quick yeah, man. And then before that guy, so there's always been, I've been there since June. Um, I'm going to move out now because I have a job and uh, I, have mo- I have money coming in. So I'm actually going to get somewhere relatively nice. But um, 
I when I first moved in, there was a guy, a uh, Spanish dude, who didn't really speak English, and him and the Billy guy fucking hated each other because um, the the Billy kid he he's I say he's a kid he's probably the same age as me and he's he's playing computer games he's on a headset and he's like playing with his friends and he's like shouting and all like oh, oh behind you behind you like banging on the keys to like one or two in the morning yeah. so this guy complained about him and the kid wouldn't the like, Billy wouldn't stop um so he fucking moved out and then the next time this uh just this middle aged like alcoholic dude moved in and all he had was a duffel bag and he would basically you wouldn't see him all day and then you'd wake up in the morning and he'd just be lying on his bed like fully dressed yeah. just shoes on stinking of boots shoes yeah. on yeah. and then you and then you'd be like alright and then you go get food or have a shower and then you'd come back and he'd just be gone Yeah, you wouldn't see him then until the next morning so he's gone now this French dude is living with us how, how, did, how, how did you find this place and like what did you mentally have to do to be like, yes, this is what I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. So I, I just, um, I just, I knew like I had savings and then I knew coming here that like, I was just like, I have to be frugal with my money or like, so I moved in to this Airbnb uh, that was like super cheap and it was like a long-term Airbnb. So it was for a month. And then like, it was super cheap and then I just the first month I was there I was like this is fine like and it's really I'm saving money and I can see myself just living here and it just saves me having to go and look for an apartment and all that shit so I was just like messaged the landlord and I was like hey can I just like stay here just like whatever and indefinitely and just pay you and then she was like yeah yeah and can I pay less rent and because she does it through Airbnb so she's kind of doing it illegally where she's like yeah yeah, yeah. so you just check like pretend that you've left on Airbnb and then I'll just keep you here and you can pay less. But yeah. she's just pocketing all the money. Um, so she's probably... And it's like, there's me. So there's me and the two guys in my room. And then there's two other guys who live in the apartment in separate rooms. Yeah. Um, so with it's one, fucking... Five. one With one shower. Yeah. And um, <laughs> one kitchen. I don't use the kitchen. I, I, eat, I eat out every single day. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, dude, so then I was, like, I was just pretty tolerable of it because I was, like, I don't need much. Like, I don't fucking, I wear basically the same clothes every day and I don't fucking, I, I'm i very just whatever. And then I was pretty happy with the situation up until, like, a month ago. A few weeks ago, I was, like, I fucking can't do this anymore. Like, I need, I need a place of my own. I can't fucking do this anymore. And uh, it's just gross, the fucking situa- bathroom situation is, like... Like they're all bar me and the French dude, they're all like Asian. So yeah. they all have like black Asian hair, like. Uh-huh. And I <laughs> the shower was just like fucking would get clogged all the time with like hair, like black clumps of hair. Yeah. And I brought the Billy guy in because I knew it was fucking him. And I said, Can you like do something about it? like don't do this or whatever? And he was like Oh, I think that's just like that's all of us or whatever. And I was like, "Do I look? Does that look like my hair? Like, does that look? Does there? Any, does that look like red hair?" Um, For the listeners, Rob has yes, yeah, so ginger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was. Uh, it was just dude, and it's. Uh, and then the guy. I do a joke about this, and people think uh, whatever. But the guy, the middle-aged dude, was just. He would jerk off in the shower. And then, like, I, and you know this because because you go in to have a shower, and there would be semen on the floor of the oh, shower, fuck. and then in the kind of drain cover thing, because semen isn't like, it's not like you can come somewhere and then just like rinse it down with water, like it sticks, it congeals, like, it congeals, it like, yeah. and it's like fucking, it's not like just hosing it down with a shower quickly isn't gonna like it sticks and it kind of stays yeah. especially in like a shower thing because i'll admit right i jerked off one time and because the, there was i didn't i couldn't jerk off for like three weeks because because of the living situation because i was like i don't know where i'm gonna do this because i'm sharing a room with two dudes yeah and then the bathroom is like so close to the room and the bathroom there's a gap of like a couple of inches at the top and the bottom of the door yeah and I was like, if I jerk off, people are going to fucking hear me. Like, so 
um i'd have to like do it like in the middle of the night and then one time Set i an jerked alarm okay i i can't really accuse anyone of being a dirtbag because <laughs> one time i i jerked off into the sink which is the like kitchen sink no no not the kitchen okay, sink the, no no no, the no. i have i have standards okay i'm not gonna i'm not that much of a savage but i jerked off into the sink and then i tried to just like wash it away with water yeah and it just fucking doesn't go anywhere and then it got in the sink thing it got caught like in the sink thing and i had to like drain clean the it's like a what do you call it like a like a I know what you're talking about. Sieve or like a drainer thing that like stops dirt and hair. Yeah, and like some, yeah. And it got like all congealed in that. So that's how I know. Because th- that's how I know. Because it's like it fucking takes one to know one. So I was like, this fucking dude is jerking off in yeah. the shower. Yeah. And I couldn't prove it was him, but I knew I know it was him. And then, yeah, dude. So I was just like, up until the last two weeks, I was fine with it. And then now, and then how I found out was because I thought I was getting like a sweet deal, like an apartment in Berlin for 370 euro a month. Yeah. And then I was telling people, and they were like, how much are you paying for rent? And I was like, I'm paying 370 euro a month, but I'm sharing with two people. And they were like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? And I was like, no. And they were like, dude, it's over you, can, a thousand you can get your own place yeah. with your own room, sharing an apartment with one other person for four to 400, 450, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, fuck, I'm actually... I'm getting raped with this living situation. Like, so uh, those are hard to come harder. Like even in the last year, when my efforts to mm. move here, those are getting harder to come by, but yeah. 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 Yes, you can. Mm. Yeah. Especially with, um, I've seen with what I like about here is the comedians seem to like look after each other in the community thing mm. where if you post in the, um, one of the groups, um, that if you post in one of the groups, I'm looking, if anyone hears about an apartment, like people will, Comedians will genuinely... Uh, I've heard of a good few comedians getting apartments because they put it in the group and then a comedian will just hear. Yeah. And they'll, they'll hook you up. Like So yeah. um, I'll probably do that in the next two weeks. People are going to just start doing comedy just so that they can get an apartment. Post yeah. in the group, be like, all right. If that's yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> where... Like genius. Uh, yeah, dude, I learned that jizz thing very early on, freshman year in... Uh, in college and is it do they are dorms a uniquely u.s concept or do those no there's dorms in in ireland but it wouldn't be considered like um no there's dorms now sorry i was was confusing about like a frat house or something but um no there's dorms there'd be dorms in ireland yeah 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 because i know like here uh because i'm technically getting my master's right now Mm. uh, it's like a very small percentage of the student population that actually lives in like student housing Mm. but uh but yeah i was i was in the dorms and um same thing it was a triple same thing so it was like yeah i had to jerk off in the shower Mm. and i thought i was safe and then i remember like the first time like i went to like i was out out of the shower so i went to like put socks on or something and like lifted and like there was like just jizz stuck to my toes you know like it was just like well that's when i started to learn like it didn't stop me from jerking off in the shower but you really gotta get get involved and get down the drain so all these serial rapists (laughs) keep getting caught man it's like it's semen is not easy to get rid of yeah but um i uh yeah, with the jerking off thing, I was like, and then it just got to a point where like everyone was being so gross. I was like, all right, I'm going to be gross. Like, I don't give a fuck. So I just started jerking off in the bathroom. I was like, I don't even care if they can hear me. Like, I was, I was like, I don't even care. Are like, you a just, loud jerker? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I was like, I was being very quiet and, you know, sneaky about it. But like, I was like, if they do hear it, like, I don't care. I don't give a You're fuck. You're worried about like the actual sound of the motion? Just the sound, yeah. Okay. And, um, I got to a stage where it's like, I just don't care. Like, yeah. I, I really don't care. And if they do say it to me, I'm like, you can't say anything to me. You're all dirty cunts. There's yeah. hair everywhere. Yeah. There's piss on the toilet seat. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't care. None of you have a leg to stand on yeah. to accuse me of anything. So like, yeah, dude. I, I mean, I joke about it, but I, I have come to terms with making a habit out of like, again yeah i don't say this proudly either but like if if i'm traveling in a hostel like mm. there's no place for me to like yeah 
And because iPhones now are like basically completely waterproof, mm. you can just bring that into the shower with me and oh, just start okay. looking at some porn on there. And do you don't need like a like a uh, a windshield wiper to like <laughs> clean the. <laughs> you, it is it is important to like to not get the water on it, the screen, it fucks yeah. up the touch screen thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, because you'd have to keep wiping the screen. Yeah, water but screen. but but I mean like. It's either that or be the guy who, which again has also happened where like people are just like fucking on the top bunk mm. above you. And I'm like, yeah. All right. I mean like for that, I'm like, why aren't you going in the fucking bathroom? Like it's yeah. so in my opinion, so much more pleasant in that hostile bathroom. I mean, to an extent <laughs> than it is like trying to secretly maneuver at 3 mm. AM to be, you know, fucking yeah. someone in a bunk bed. And this dude and his girlfriend, they have sex like in the room in front of me and <laughs> the other the dude fuck? yeah not like gratuitous like for like, like really uh you know they're not like 69ing on top of the covers <laughs> everyone was like but you know there's just times where you'd wake up in the morning and they're obviously they're just fucking you can just tell they're fucking yeah. under the covers and then there's just even days where like there's the beds are kind of all up against the wall and there's like a couple of meters and then we all have like desks or like power outlets we can put in our laptops or whatever. Yeah. And like I do like editing or whatever and I have my headphones in and the fucking Billy guy is playing computer games. Yeah. So and they're behind us in the bed. Yeah. And they think that that's like a good enough window to fuck because like yeah. I have to get my headphones like go take a piss. Yeah. And there's like this whole kerfuffle where they're trying to like oh shit like fucking yeah we better stop type thing yeah i'm like seriously you think that that's like a good opportunity to fuck that we're not gonna i i feel like there's a tension that all of you are experiencing trying to make this and i think you yeah. gotta just go all in mm. and it's like go for like let like they can fuck yeah. loud and proud yes. whenever they yeah. want you can fucking be in the bed just yeah. jerking off it's like, like you're whatever fuck, just like, fuck okay none of this yeah fucking pussy footing around you know and then you guys might end up forming the you know the three of you this bond that you never yeah. knew yeah. friends for life mm. you know yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How, how how old is everybody in this situation well, i'm 27 and billy and the other guy are probably uh, a bit younger maybe 20 21 22 yeah. maybe um but yeah because the first time i i the first night that dude was there i came home and it was like two in the morning and i like let, let myself into the room and they were proper fucking like and i walked in and i'm so unfazed by it i was just like oh yeah whatever like just i don't know it was just it's more annoying than like being yeah. like oh what the fuck yeah i'm just like oh fuck the dudes like yeah but i'm gross as well like my i have long hair so my hair sheds and my bed is just like it's like there's a Labrador sleeping in my bed. Like there's just <laughs> hair everywhere. Yeah. And I just haven't like I haven't cleaned my sheets in like three months. There's uh even like the pillow that I have, and it's not because of me. The pillow that I have looks like it has like coffee stains on it. Like, yeah. No, it's not coffee stains. <laughs> sure. I don't know what fluid it is, but I'm just so fucking lazy. I'm like, ah, whatever. I'll just if I get some if I get a uh, pink eye, I get pink eye like um i'm just such a lazy i'm a lazy lazy man but, I, um, I made <clears throat> this none of this stuff here is mine where i'm staying the uh old roommate left it and then the new roommate like gave me the bedding mm. i'm borrowing like his pillow mm. and i mean this is gross but mm. i like i have like horrible like so i actually come from a quite an irish background yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's like barry and kelly are my two last things yeah, and Barry's not very, very, yeah. white as fuck mm. and like super bad skin like yeah. i'm about to turn 36 and like i still have like acne like a 14 year old mm. and i for whatever reason i was just in bed and i like squeezed the back of my neck and just this like pus and blood filled like fucking zit oh, all shit. and like bled through the pillowcase yeah. i turned the pillow over but like on the other side it looks like yeah yeah i tried to like bleach it out and no yeah i don't do i used to love uh squeezing fucking spots and stuff but during lockdown, I uh, I squeezed like a pimple on my forehead. Yeah. Like I've done a million times in my life. Yeah. And then the next day, I woke up and I looked like the fucking elephant man. <laughs> like my forehead was like all swollen Jesus. out. My eye, all my eyelids were like swollen and stuff. And I had to go down to my doctor and then uh, he was like, yeah, whatever you fucking did, it went into your fucking... Uh, skiing around the thing yeah and um and then that went down but i was left with like a golf ball sized 
fucking lump it just got on my infected head. overnight got infected yeah yeah and i was just left with this golf ball sized lump on my head for like a month yeah and um i was like right i'm never fucking doing that again yeah um but like you've done it a million times you know in my life and whatever i was just a fuck man i have such a shitty immune system like anyone who knows me well is like um like since i've been since i've been in berlin so when i came here last summer i got uh, a kidney stone mm. which you don't get it overnight it accumulated over i basically got my I, I got so i was 76 kg before lockdown and in the space of two or three months i was nearly 90 92 93 um and that's just gonna google uh, the translation there to yeah, pronounce for it's, myself it's yeah it's it's a lot man i don't even know uh, yeah all right i mean yeah. i'm fucking out of control with my but yeah I yeah gotcha. it's a lot and um i and then i came to berlin and then i got a kidney stone and uh which turns out is it's cause of like rapid weight gain um because I, mean, I was I was in the urologist office and um, I was kind of like, what causes this, you know? And he's like, I don't know. Like, it's uh, you're really young, you're relatively fit. Because at the time I lost the weight, he's like, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you know, family history, you've never had one before. And then I was like, I don't know if this is relevant, but um, at the start of lockdown, I put on like about twenty kg in the space of a few months. And the look on his face, he was just like, you fucking fat piece of shit. You idiot. He was like, of course, that's what caused it. Like, he was like a spike in like sodium and sugar and oh, all this stuff. So it wasn't, I'm sorry, I thought the kidney stone causes the weight gain. The weight gain causes no, the No, weight gain caused ah, okay, okay, the, okay. and I've gotten really fat before, mm -hmm. but it's, it seems like it's getting fat in a short period of time yeah. is the issue. Yeah. Um, and uh so that's what caused it so i got a kidney stone when i was here um so i had to get that taken out and then since i've been here this time i had an ear infection the first week or two i got here and then i and then two weeks ago i got gonorrhea so how's that i, yeah. mean, I don't think i've oh it's a fucking nightmare dude one. oh dude man I um yeah it's fucking gross man I I was lucky I had antibiotics with me so I didn't have to go and see a fucking doctor like I don't okay look like I haven't been diagnosed with gonorrhea but it's it is gonorrhea like it just google image it was just it was it and the circumstances that led to it were um yeah basically blew a dude and uh fucking Oops. Oral gonorrhea? Oral gonorrhea, yeah. Oh, shit. It was in my throat. Oh, I, man. For like a week. I guess it's I, better? I don't know. Oh, it's much better. Oh, oral gonorrhea? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I suppose, yeah, because anything with your dick is just, oh, it's your dick. You don't want anything. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, yeah, but like your throat, though, like I was terrified because I woke up uh, the next day and like he fucking, I was doing a bit about it. But it's it's one of those things where it's like a story that's funny for like the first two or three times you tell it, and then because it's just you've just lived it, so yeah, it's sure. you're talking about it and it's fresh. Yeah. But then it, it dies, and then it just becomes a bit, and then people don't buy it anymore. But um, I uh, he fucking like forcefully like made me like fucking deep throw them to the point where it was like. Like, I basically got, like, blunt force trauma to the back of my <laughs> throat. Like, my throat looked like fucking Rihanna. Like, it was fucking... Dude, I woke up the next day and, like, I almost got to a point where, like, it was almost borderline rape. I'm not even kidding me. Like, I was there, like... I, like, I had to, like, one or two times, I was, like, I had to, like, push back up and be like, wait, 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 what are you doing? And then, like, do it again. He'd fucking do it again. Was this like, a... Like, super, like, nearly, ch nearly, like, choking. Like, Did you know right? this person or what were the no, circumstances? No, no, no. I didn't. I just met him on fucking Grinder. Yeah. And, uh... Do you, like, I, discuss that... I mean... Yeah. Do you discuss being okay with that ahead of time or it's just like... No, it was just like in the heat of the moment type thing. Yeah. And then I was like, nah, I'm not getting... It's not really rape. Like, I can really get myself out of this situation if i wanted to and like i did like lift my head up when i was like ah this is too much and i was like not enjoying it at all but in my head it was like um 
I was like, it's been, it was just so long since I had any kind of intimacy. And I was like, just see this through and then you're going to get a blow job after this. So just, let's just soldier through this and you will get what you're getting. Yeah. And then I ended it's the whole thing. He ended up not getting anything from it. Um, he was just like chilling there because he was, I went the next day I did Anna's podcast, uh, Anna Barrows and I, uh, like the back of my, I thought I had COVID. Like I went and got tested for COVID because my throat was fucked. Yeah. And then I was talking to her and she was like, no, 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 that's like, that's common. And I Googled it as well. And then, so I had that for like a week, but that cleared up. And then just like maybe like bang on a week later, then I just got like a really bad throat infection. Like just like, like it was all white and infected and pus and everything. And um, I was like, fuck. So I went and got tested for COVID again because I was like, I just want to rule that out. Yeah. Um, and then I was just lucky I had antibiotics. Um, and did you yeah. tell the guy like were you like yo? No, because I was so fucking angry because I basically blew him, and then he was like, "Yeah, I gotta go to bed." And then like I just it was one of those things, and I kind of yeah. like said it to him, and it was super awkward. I was pissed, and I just like blocked him on Grinder. I suppose I could unblock him and be like, "You fucking gave me a." fucking and he wasn't clean as well like, all these things man it's just like <laughs> you're so desperate that you let things slide but like in future i'm just gonna be like if i even sense that you're not like hygienic i'm just gonna be like what Fuck can you you i'm gonna like no i'm not doing this like because he wasn't hygienic i just knew how do you and in, in what sense like you just you just picture. tell you just you could you could tell like you could tell just by the smell like the, first of all his breath smell like cigarettes which is a massive turn off yeah. and you could just smell by like down there that like his groin or his dick and balls you're like oh, he didn't like shower or he didn't like make a concerted effort to be clean for yeah. this encounter or whatever yeah and then so yeah then I got gonorrhea or right, well I say gonorrhea because it's what mostly symptomatically it lines up with Anna was the one who diagnosed you with that? No, I basically just Googled it and just found like oral gonorrhea yeah. and just all the photos and the symptoms and everything. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. And then I took antibiotics and it cleared up. Yeah. But yeah, I have just a terrible immune system. I'm always getting sick. I'm always fucking like, and I have hypochondria as well. So like I get a stinging thing in my brain and I'm like, well, I guess I have a tumor yeah. or like, you know, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. I, do you, so I don't, I mean, I'm not, I haven't been diagnosed, but like, I definitely have like a light hypochondria yeah. for sure. Mm. And I'm, and I think also paired with like, not severe, but like moderate anxiety. Mm. And I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and the thing with the hypochondria thing is like, well, at least in my head, it's, it's not even just like worrying about having the thing. Then I like, I'm like, oh, the logistics of like getting it addressed. But then I'm like, but what if I am right and I do have this yeah, fucking yeah, thing? Yeah. I'm going to look like a fucking dickhead if yeah. I don't get it checked out. And like I was in the hospital for like two separate times this past week because I thought I had a blood clot. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Only because I once was at the doctor's and I was like, oh, yeah, I just have this pain in my calf. It's been there for four days. And like I described it and he's like, you need to immediately go and get like a mm. sonogram. It, this is like a couple years ago and I never would have even fucking thought anything about it. Yeah. And then I had that exact same thing here and then like uh you know i messaged some friends i'm like oh, i'm really having bad, bad bad anxiety right now they're like oh you're fucking crazy you are a hypochondriac mm. um but i did even though i was vaccinated i did get covid like a couple months ago and that can increase that um and then like been doing my fair share of cocaine <laughs> and yeah. like that can cause that mm. so like i messaged three of my doctor friends two are actually irish mm. and they were like, mm, go get that checked out. Yeah. And so it's like, well, if I have three doctors and all of them say go check it, get it checked out versus mm. like my friends were like, ah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like I went through that whole thing and like, and then they test the first, like for that, they test your blood levels mm. before they do the sonogram. And if there's like this raised level of, uh, I forget what it's called. D D diamond D dimer, I think. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, Two and a half hours later, they come back and I'm like, okay, now I can just go home. They're like, you have very elevated levels of D. I was like, fuck. Mm. They're like, we need to do a sonogram right now. You have to come back tomorrow and we can do a more extensive one. Just and then of your leg, of your calf. Yeah. And well, the, the whole right leg. Yeah. And then the next day they did like 
the right leg and like the upper part of the left. And it's such, I don't, have you ever had a sonogram? No, is that where they... It's like when you see pregnant with the gel. Yes, I have. I've got it done on my balls, man. It's fucking... <laughs> what the, yeah, what, yeah. Because I found a lump on my balls once. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And, uh, dude, it's not fun, man. It's it's not even that it's like... It's not... Well, at least I don't know about the balls, yeah. but it's not even that it's painful. It's that it's such an uncomfortable, like... And at least for me, like, they yeah. have the screen right there. Mm. And you can see where they're, like, pressing down. Yeah. And then that you, like... For the vein stuff, like you hear the like this, like whoa, 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 and it's like the blood going. And like, if you're in the tiniest bit like squeamish or anything, it's just fucking. Yeah, that's uh, see if they did it. So they obviously did a sonogram and there was no blood clot. Yeah, because if that happened to me and they did yeah. a sonogram, I'd be like, no, 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 you have to do it everywhere. Cause oh, I because the blood clots just move no, no, on exactly. to my head. Like, that's, that's what, what I, was I was thinking. You know, but I, but I, but also it was my first time going to like a German like going to the hospital and mm. I have shit insurance and mm. like um my like I can maybe poorly order at a restaurant yeah but like as soon as I got in I was like can show you gun can in via English reckon and like yeah. three people are like nine <laughs> and I was like shit. fuck yeah. like that that is its own other beast like not being in your home country and not speaking the local language like yeah that added to the fucking anxiety this, yeah the fear of yeah yeah i'd say when i was in the hospital here um oh yeah to add into the into the ear infection and the gonorrhea like in between that i had like the worst fucking flu ever i was convinced i had covid but i went and got like two pcr tests to make sure it wasn't and i just i just had a fucking really bad flu in the middle of summer when it was like 30 degrees here like i couldn't fucking i had to tell everyone my nose is running so much that I had to like go on stage with tissue plugged into my nose. <laughs> really? Yeah. And when, if anyone asked me what it was, I'd say, oh, it's a nosebleed because if I say my nose is running, yeah. they'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Even if you said you have, which I understand, but I was like, I'm just going to say I have a, ru- a runny nose yeah. and, uh, or I have a, uh, a nosebleed. Um, so like for a week, I couldn't, like my eyes were tearing, my nose was running. I just felt like shit. Um, I get body aches and everything um so yeah i just i think my immune system is just fucked but any time yeah with my experience in hospital here with the kidney stones was like everyone was like super fucking nice and so fucking efficient like i like the, i don't know there's the whole stereotype about germans and everything but like it was just insane the level of um the level and i was lucky because it's just so strange to say but i was lucky that i uh, when i was going into hospital in germany they do. They, they don't. I don't think they do this in Ireland, but or at least not when I was there. They tested you for COVID, obviously, before you went into hospital, and then they also tested for this thing called MRSA. Do you know MRSA? Uh, yeah, we call yeah. it MRSA. Yeah, yeah MRSA. Yeah. yeah, they tested me for MRSA. Yeah, and I have MRSA. What? Yes, yeah, I have MRSA. Where? Don't don't worry. It's not. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's, it's not like, like you don't have to like get new microphones. No. Out of this, but like. But no, but I mean, it's uh, the, 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 like the, the, uh, resist bacteria, bacteria or resist, anti, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Antibiotic resistant. Yes. Staph infection. Yeah. So they yeah. told me I had that. Um, so they had to put me in a room by myself, yeah. which was insane. It was like this big, had yeah. a fucking flat screen TV, just yeah. because I had MRSA and, uh, they, um, so yeah, maybe that's why I get sick. I don't know. They basically said, I was like, um, I was like, fuck, do I have like, have I given it to tons of people? And they're like, no, 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 it's like, it's not. Basically, they test it. It's, I have it in my um, my mouth and my throat. Mm-hmm. And it's not, in fa- I basically, I got it from, um, I was going to say blowing a guy, but that's, <laughs> I'm joking. But they, uh, I got it, I used to do like. Um, this one guy just gave yeah, you this everything. One guy, yeah, <laughs> just gave me everything. Yeah, this just fucking riddled, fucking dirty bastard, but. I used to do uh, MMA and I I did a lot of grappling and stuff and um, the like jujitsu and like staff infections are like rampant in gyms because you know people come onto the mat with like dirty feet and then the bacteria stuff grows on the mat and even though it's gym, gyms make a really concerted effort to keep the mats um, sterilized it still happens so I we think that's how I got it. Um, and then I was like, should I, is this a problem? And then they were like, no, like, unless you like work with, you know, immunocompromised people or old people. And I was like, well, my grandmother, like I see her all the time. They're like, no, no, that's fine. So it's a weird thing. And then when I was in Germany, they said, okay, yeah, you have to do this cleanse where you, every day you have to use this shampoo 
use this mouthwash, use this uh, condition, this uh, body wash shit to kill the virus on your skin. And then uh, I was like, okay. And then I got back to Ireland and they were like, nah, it's fine. It'll take care of itself type thing. So I, I don't know um, yeah. where, but yeah, it was just like silver lining. I got like my own room in sure. German hospital. Yeah. And I could stay there for like four days because the, the operate and my body was like rejected the they basically put like a dude like i've had the worst <laughs> like nothing would phase me like, first of all they say kidney stones is more painful than pregnancy i've heard that as well yeah like like pregnant birth. women will say yes, it's labor yeah. Yeah. and people are like how do you know that was like because fucking pregnant women have said it it's not yeah. this thing the patriarchy has involved <laughs> like they asked pregnant women who've had both and they've yeah. said kidney stones so it's yeah. fucking an objective fact and so like dude i don't think like i have a pretty high pain tolerance but the morning i woke up i don't even know how to describe the pain it was like in my lower back and it wasn't like a sharp pain it was just like a fucking it almost felt like i had a really 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 bad migraine in my lower back mm. and the pain was so bad that i, I puked from the pain which had oh. never happened before like i broke my collarbone puking <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I puked just and then I slipped on the puke and <laughs> broke my collarbone. But like I broke my collarbone, which is apparently one of the most painful bones to break in your body. Yeah. Everything I didn't puke and um the pain from this was so bad it made me puke. And then when I went in to get the stone out, they basically I was like, Oh, it's fine, they're gonna do a keyhole thing where they just put a hole in above your kidney. I didn't even know that was a thing. And go into your thing and uh whatever. And they're like, no, 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 no. What we're going to do is, is we're going to go up through your, this is not the medical terminology they use, but we're like, we're going to go up through your dick hole, up through your dick, through your bladder, into your, because the stone was actually in the tube between the kidney and the bladder. So that's where they couldn't do a, they couldn't do a keyhole. So they go all the way up there with like a laser and like, like Star Wars, like, and like break it into tiny little pieces. But you still have to pass and, those, right? Huh? You still have to like piss those out? Piss them out, but they're minuscule. Like you wouldn't even feel it. And um, this is not technology I think we have in the US. I know that like they do, they actually do like a sonogram type thing. Yeah. And it's, and it like breaks it down, but mm. still like people will like, you'll, the neighbors will hear you like screaming as yeah. you have to, like, I've never heard of either of those two methods. Yeah. So it's, I think you can piss them out if they're of a relative size. Yeah. But mine was so fucking big that like you're not going to piss this out. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to do this. Um, and then they had to uh, put like a stent, which is like a tube that goes in again up through the thing and it basically just allows the tube to heal. So basically it's like a tube that goes from your bladder to your thing and it just allows you to piss and it lets the actual part of your body heal from the thing. So then I had to get to remove that in Ireland. And uh, it's funny what you say with the sonogram thing was like, so I had to get it removed in Ireland. And so basically I'm lying there and they have like the blue uh, sheet thing over you. And then there's just like a hole in the sheet. So your dick is just mm -hmm. lying there. Yeah. And then there's all these doctors and nurses and everything. And um, it was my birthday. And they know they do like, uh, they do that thing where they uh, like three times before they do whatever they're doing to you they check your name and your date of birth so they don't accidentally remove your leg or whatever like they don't do the wrong thing yeah, to you yeah. so like, you are Robert Moriarty you are you are here to, to get this done and you're like yes 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 so I'm sitting doing that and then they saw it was my birthday and they're like oh it's your birthday and they're like oh you won't forget this birthday and all this <laughs> stuff and then the doctor's like oh, it's actually my daughter's birthday and they're having all this chat and I'm lying there with my dick just <laughs> yeah, out like, and yeah. it's cold so it's like really small <laughs> yeah. and you know your dick is in instinctively knows that something bad is about uh -huh. to happen so it's kind of retreating into your body yeah so then they basically had to go i'm lying there and i had to go up my dick with no anesthetic i mean they, why they covered they cover the tube in a bit of the thing that goes up your dick in like numbing gel yeah but it's not it doesn't do anything and i went they went up through my dick through my bladder and they get like a little pincer and they grab the tube that's going from my bladder to my thing uh -huh. and they just get it and they're like okay on three and then they just fucking they pull it out and dude i've ne i was excruciating actually not as bad as i got a catheter in when i was in germany <laughs> and a catheter 
Uh, you've had you, you got to make like a spreadsheet of the procedures. Has, yeah, my done. dick, and then oh, I the fucking tube they pulled out doing the the stent. It's called when yeah. I got it removed is only like the width of uh, like those headphones. Yeah. Maybe even whatever. Yeah. But the catheter is like the width of a fucking McDonald's straw. Yeah. And I thought a catheter only goes like into your dick a little bit. Yeah. But your a catheter goes like all the way up your dick into your bladder. So then when you're lying in bed, you don't even feel the urge to piss because your bladder just fills, goes into the thing. All right. So I'm lying there and these two nurses come in and they're like, this is in Germany after I just got it removed. And I got the kidney stone removed and these two nurses come in and they're like, okay, we're going to remove your catheter now uh, at lunchtime or whatever. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I just kept putting it off in the back of my head. I was like, oh, it's two hours away or whatever. And they came in to remove it. Yeah, it's probably as thick as the microphone cable. Yeah, like an XLR cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, Did you speak German? They came, no. Okay. No. Um, but they all spoke really good English. Yeah. Um, and they came in and they... Uh, they're like, okay, we're gonna have to remove this. It's gonna be painful. And then they started pulling on it slowly, and I just started screaming, like screaming. And they went, okay, we're just gonna pull it out really quickly because whatever. And they just kind of like one, two, three, and they fucking pulled it out, dude. Oh my god, dude, I can't even fucking begin to the pain. I was would like, be scared, like they would rip my dick off. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, and like I don't have much there as it is. And I was like, I fucking like. <laughs> protect and then for like the next two weeks I was pissing blood and this is actually a funny story I, I was pissing blood for about two weeks uh-huh. um, and I took a piss at the wall comedy club yeah and I pissed in the uh, I pissed in the uh, urinal and so there's just like blood in the urinal and then uh, the host or whatever um, was like emceeing I think it was Dio and he was just like uh, he came and he was like um, yeah, I just I saw blood in the urinal there. I just want to make sure like everybody's okay. Like it was <laughs> there something, and then I was just like, yeah, it's me. Don't worry about it, or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, then I got circumcised like three years ago, which is a whole other. What the fuck, man? Dude, this, you I'm gotta just, go on like a medical oddities yeah, podcast. I'm a <laughs> walking fucking disaster, <laughs> wait, man. Wait, wait. Yeah. Well, okay, so why? What happened? I. Basically, I should have gotten it done when, uh, so when you tell people you got circumcised, they're like, oh, you, when you were a kid. And I was like, no, like fucking two years ago. Yeah. Um, so I basically got it done for like medical reasons because I sh- basically should have gotten it done when I was a kid because it was just, I had like, it was tight, too tight or whatever. And, I, I've uh, heard of this like a lot actually yeah. where, and like if you get an erection, it's like painful because yeah. like the foreskin doesn't fully retract. Mm, that was it basically. Yeah. But I managed, like I made it to my teens or whatever and it got better. I was able to stretch it out or whatever yeah and then i just went into kind of early 20s and it just got worse again so i had to get it removed and um dude that was like that was up there with the with the kidney stones what do they they don't put you out for that oh they put me out yeah 100 percent. yeah and um i had to uh you're just like for the i swear to god for like a m- few weeks afterwards, you uh, your dick looks like a like a ripe avocado. Like it's just br- <laughs> it's like brown and like all these different colors, and it's like super. It's just like it's all uh, in like bruised, and it's like all swollen and stuff. Can they and give you like, like anti boner pills? Yeah, yeah. Like- this is the thing. I um, and then you're you're looking at it like is my dick ever gonna look normal again? And then basically, yeah, getting a boner was excruciating. But they say that's impo- like it's that should happen because if you don't get a boner for the six weeks while it's healing, it will heal. The scar Again, tissue will scar like, tissue will yeah. heal yeah. without it having ever been stretched. Right. Then if you go six weeks without having a boner, the first boner you get in six weeks oh. will be you. You it'll be like. You can imagine, like, yeah. it just it would have healed, yeah. having never stretched. So they're like, it is good to get boners, kind yeah. thing. And as you got them more, it got less painful. But yeah. the first few ones, man, were fucking. You're like, am I ever going to be able to jerk off again? Yeah, what is going on here? Um, and yeah, dude, it was extreme. And then you got to get used to kind of like, I don't know, are you circumcised? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Are. yeah, but you obviously got it done as a kid. Yeah, yeah. So like, when you're not circumcised. Your the your 
tip of your dick is like super sensitive to like if you're not circumcised and your tip of your dick like hits the inside of your jeans or whatever you're it fucking is painful like so um the thought of that alone you, you tell that to uncircumcised people yeah that you're you're the dick the tip of your dick is just hitting off your yeah your jeans or whatever yeah. at the shower and they're like oh they can't even think about it because it's so fucking sensitive but um, but is it sensitive when it hits the with with the foreskin on is it still sensitive no because the foreskin's like protecting it but right. if you retract the foreskin sure and it touches something it's like super fucking uncomfortable yeah you're the um, first person i've talked to who's had both yeah have you both perspective yeah yeah on yeah both, but yeah it's yeah it's, yeah, it's strange because anyone i know has had it has gotten it done as a kid so they don't know any better and and also they're like there's that whole debate about um does it uh does it take away from you know or got like sexual does yeah. it feel is does it take away from the pleasure or whatever yeah. and i honestly can't really tell um because i think to some degree it might because you're uh as a uh, dude some comedian said this to me when we were talking about it and uh, cause he was, I was saying, I don't know. And he was like, it definitely affects it. Cause he's like, you're the dick, your tip of your dick goes from being like kind of soft and moisty when you're uncircumcised to like, he was like, it's like getting a couch reupholstered that like you get it reupholstered and it's now like hard leather. Cause that's mm-hmm. what it's like. Your dick just goes fucking super hard, like a hel- like a helmet. And so you do lose some sensitivity, 100%. But Um, like, so, so I have opinions on this and you're like the perfect person to talk to about this. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess like, right. You play guitar, you get calluses on your fingers. Yeah. 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 Um, but so I don't know if you were at slips when I talked about this, I'm very open about it. I just haven't Mm. talked about on stage so much here. Like, uh, so like I used to be a gay for pay sex worker. Oh really? yeah. Yeah. So I've been with a decent number of dudes. Yeah. Um, and I have like some of the worst experiences I've had have been yeah. with uncircumcised dudes, yeah. Uh, which I know is like overwhelmingly the majority of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand like when people call it like baby mutilation, like I I get it, but like I think it's a purely cosmetic surgery in unless instances mm. like this. But as a cosmetic surgery, like I'm so much more a fan of that because yeah. like i've i literally learned the word when i was like 19 like schmegma schmegma oh, oh dude it is so dude. so when you talked about the hygienic thing yeah dude i was like what the fuck is going oh, on man. here and i told my gay friends and they're like yeah. oh it's schmegma and i was like what is that even like oh, fucking dick God, cheese man. like fucking, yeah I, that's not something i've ever like ever had like a shower daily and of course yeah. but like if i went two weeks not showering, I wouldn't get dick cheese. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's so much more hygienic, 100%. So much cleaner. Um, but yeah, like the smegma thing, the dick cheese thing, man, is like, whew. like, cause I, this is so gross, but like, because of my, the foreskin thing, um, obviously I couldn't pull back my foreskin for years um, because of how tight it Truly was. for years. For years, yeah. From like, you know, you start, you know, yeah, from like, I don't know when, Yeah, I don't think smegma is an issue for fucking kids. I don't know what it is. I don't know yeah. if it's when you hit puberty. Actually, no, maybe this is good. I can remember my parents <laughs> trying to teach me like, you have to pull back your fucking foreskin quickly because my mom is like a nurse. So she knows yeah. everything. So she's like, you have to, this is when I was a kid, she's like, you, ha- you have to do this like, or else it's going to lead to issues. And I was just like, I'm not fucking touching my dick. Like I don't, yeah. the thought of pulling back your foreskin when you're a kid is terrifying. When you take a piss, do you have to, I really don't know. Like, do you have to, do you have to pull, um, can you piss through the not closed I, part or like the, uh, you, you pull it back like a small bit. Like I, I had a friend, right. Yeah. Who had who had been circumcised. Yeah. And, uh, I had to explain to him using sp- circumcised his whole life. And I explained to him, he almost puked when I was explaining to him, like how, cause I think all the porn he'd watched, everyone was circumcised. Yeah. And I was explaining to him how like an uncircumcised dick works. Like you, yeah. if you pull back the foreskin and it's like, it's like the, you know, like a, a handle on a bike and you can like pull it, you get the, like the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like rubber and you pull it back and it like retracts and then something comes out from inside it. Like on the bike handle, you know, like a bike handle has got the rubber grips on it. Right. And, and if you like if ride you too to, like, hard, it will come off the yeah, metal. And if you like, were to like grab the opening and then kind of pull it in on itself, it I, would like fold out. Oh, okay. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. And then something would come out the center yeah. and he was like, that is fucking gross. Yeah. But yeah, for like for years, I just couldn't even get there. So like when I eventually in my late teens and I was eventually able to like stretch it out so I could go back. Yeah. Dude, there was like 
there was like years worth of oh, dick cheese dude it was oh god disgusting. could you like smell it, it? yeah dude <laughs> oh, oh man <laughs> there was years worth it was like fucking i was like what the fuck is this and um i don't believe in trigger warnings but yeah, i think that yeah you're gonna have to put one instead of this dude <laughs> i don't even know what what you'd even say they just need to put there's like a yeah yeah dude it was it was fucking gross i don't even know what it was and then it's just like and then it makes sense though because you're like when you have foreskin and you piss and everything there's piss like still in your yeah around yeah, your yeah, dick. yeah and then that just like goes in around yeah. your thing and then it just build, bacteria builds up and you've got fucking smeg but you were saying that you've had experiences where you were with men and you'd go down and there'd be dick cheese is that what you're saying yeah i feel like it's it's too long i don't i don't know if i want to burn the time to tell the story but like i basically one of the clients was a kid with cerebral palsy oh shit and i thought he just wanted to like the long version's better but like i thought he just wanted to hang out and then like well you're like watching some shitty movie i can't remember on his bed Mm. and by the way he was like this was like during like winter break or something where i'm in his house where he lives like his like filipino mom is upstairs like like oh a friend for alex like who organizes the mom organizer no no but uh, no he sent me like this is like when you used to do this on craigslist and he sent an an email like riddled with typos and what i mean not that i blame him for that but (laughs) i'm just saying like yeah you know (laughs) he's trying to type it like a hand that can't open (laughs) like (laughs) surprised he's able to type it all yeah but like yeah. Um, you can't exactly ask someone to type for him. No, you know? no, no. I, Not well, that I, scenario. So can you type was, up this ad yeah. on Craigslist so I can get laid? Like, So I, it, at one point we're sitting on the bed and I'm thinking, mm. oh, cool. He wants like a friend. Yeah. You know? And then he kind of like turns to me and he's like, yo, do you want to <laughs> shuck it? Oh. <laughs> and like oh yeah um dude i hope you got paid handsomely well here's the thing yeah so i didn't know i was gonna have an appointment that day Mm. and i had like i was i had like jacked off like seven times like i was having a day yeah you know and i was like oh like to the point where i'm like i'm i'm sore already what age are you when this was going on i was like 1920 19 okay how old was this the cerebral palsy same age same age yeah, yeah. yeah um and so i'm he, I think he's like in a chair and yeah. then yeah it's just, and like I pulled down and he's uncertain you know he's like Filipino he's uncircumcised yeah. and I, yeah it was just like like white crustacean oh. kind of shit like oh. around and I'm like what the fuck is going oh, on and man. thankfully like and I know like a lot of gay guys would be like what yeah. that's pointless but yeah. I sometimes would bring around flavored condoms that I yeah. would like insist upon and so I put a condom thank god yeah. on that and um he, I like and also thank god like I think I like literally like put my hand on it and yeah. like barely got it in my mouth and he's like <laughs> you know and just, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I was like Phew. And so did you but, put a condom on and blow him with the condom on? Yes. 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 Yeah, you don't um, and, but then he wanted he wanted to blow me. Okay. And now here now the thing is, yeah. Again, I'd come like, se- like jacked up like yeah. seven times already, like super raw. It's gonna be sloppy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like the 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 dexterity yeah. of his hands yeah. and the contr- motor control that he had over his mouth not the greatest yeah and so it was it was like he was like trying to do kung fu on my dick or something like that like you know when they have those wooden blocks that they like try it was it was awful um and and somehow i like you know was able to power through and and ended up coming but it was it was not a pleasant experience i was an idiot this has happened two times to me yeah the very first time i ever did escorting shit and then this time I didn't ask for the payment up front. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it it was such an awkward thing. I just wanted to get the fuck yeah. out of there. That yeah. Like, at no point did he... And he wasn't like... It was just... Yeah, I was like, so... Yeah, I'm, pro- I'm probably going to get going now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and he wasn't like yeah. offering money or anything. And I just... I was like shy. Like, I didn't have it in me to be like, 
where the fuck is my money? Yeah, especially to someone who's like all yeah. crippled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it. I, like, if that happened today, I would literally like march upstairs and talk to his mom. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah. like, I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, I just <laughs> blew your gross <laughs> fucking kid <laughs> up there. And clean his dick, for God's sake, as well. So, so I end up... That, that's that I learned to tell my friends. Like, they're cracking up. They tell me what smegma is. Yeah. And this is at UC Berkeley. Uh, and there's this Telegraph Avenue. It's like a big, like, the student kind of um, street that everyone hangs out on. Pizza places, bars. Mm. And, like, two months later, I'm, like, walking by. And I see him in his fucking motorized wheelchair across yeah. the street. And he makes eye contact with me. Yeah. And he literally, like, tilts his head back and starts cackling, laughing. <laughs> Like, like he knew he got away with this. Like he's this, he's this Filipino disabled supervillain. I love you know if you I mean? saw him walking down the street completely healthy, and the whole <laughs> yeah. the whole cerebral palsy yeah. thing was just a ploy yeah. to get like yeah. free. Yeah. No, dude, yeah. I I I fuck that guy. Yeah. You like, should have taken the wheelchair. That's worth a couple oh, of bucks. Oh, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't even. I mean, right? Like, I'm not about obviously like outing people but yeah. i'll out someone for being a fucking asshole yeah, and like yeah. I, I couldn't that was that was the, there's only been a couple times if even that this is it the time i ever felt shame yeah. doing yeah. fucking sex work yeah. shit and what would you have charged in that situation <laughs> i was pretty flexible with yeah, like, yeah you know yeah. there was there unlike was, him <laughs> oh dude i i think I, I i could probably dig through the old emails like yeah. uh yeah, I mean that probably would have been something like two hundred bucks or something yeah. like that. Um, it's pretty good for a yeah. Blow job. We're yeah. not blowing a smelly, <laughs> crippled, schmegma dick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. So um, wait. So this. So but anyway. Oh, so, you're doing you're doing the Lord's work. Someone <laughs> has, someone has to blow the fucking crippled people. Like <sighs> God. I mean, thank. Yeah, none of those apps existed back then or anything. Yeah. It's actually like that's kind of killed a lot of the sex work. Like yeah. like LGBT rights have really been bad for business. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There's no like secret married guys anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, um, but uh, just if you had to, uh, if you didn't have this like medical issue, just if as much as you can objectively, like, do you prefer one way or the other, being circumcised or not circumcised? I prefer. I think it is aesthetically looks better. I joke that it looks bigger and I think it does. It's weird. It's like whatever it is, it just looks bigger for some reason. Yeah. And yeah, I just think aesthetically looks better. It just is way more hygienic. Um, yeah. And I think it does aesthetically look better. And then as well, you don't really have to worry if someone's going down on you about how clean it is down there because yeah. Like obviously you make sure it's clean. You have a shower that day, but you don't have to worry. Like, geez, if they pull back my foreskin, is it gonna like knock them out? Like, you know, it's um, like a, it's like a mystery. Of like, yeah, because what? it'll get fucking. It'll if you're pissing all during the day or whatever. Like, it's not gonna smell great, even if you've cleaned yourself. Really? Like, yeah, I think so. Unless you like you, I, I think some dudes will like uncircumcised dudes will like wash their dick in a sink before they know they're gonna hook up or something, just to you know. Yeah rinse it down or whatever but um yeah it's like i don't know man it was where it was dude it was hell for like six weeks yeah six seven weeks yeah and you're kind of walking like like a crab for like two days because your dick you have to get used to the feeling of your dick hitting everything and um but yeah like i, I was in the i was it true that like most lad most guys in america get circumcised as a kid a hundred percent. Uh though that number I'll say in like the last fifteen, twenty years has yeah. definitely waned. I don't yeah. know the exact numbers, but like unless you were like basically the kid of an immigrant mm. or uh like kinda had like hippie parents, yeah. I think the rate was, was something like ninety, ninety five percent. Jesus. Um I think now it's actually like 65 70 so mm. it's definitely going down and i've even noticed it actually so it like surprises me i'll notice sometimes when there's like an american porn actor who's not circumcised mm. and i'm like oh that's interesting mm. um but uh yeah like being over here and i i talk a little bit about it in like my stand-up but it's always interesting being with like a a, a non-american woman who like 
they're kind of like almost like they don't know what to do with yeah, it because yeah, they've yeah. only seen uncircumcised yeah i used to, i yeah i've been in situations like that where you can tell they're kind of like what the fuck am i supposed to do with this because you know even when i got circumcised i was kind of like it took me a while to figure out how to jerk off because um and then all my circumcised friends are like what do you mean and i'm like you've had this since you started jerking off so you don't know any other way yeah when you're cert- when you're uncircumcised like you're the whole action is like bringing the foreskin over and back over the glands or whatever you call it yeah so then when you don't have that you're like what do i do to stimulate that area so but then i figured out that it's basically just more or less like masturbating as you would have done it anyway except you kind of need to use lube but you start to figure out how to not use it but i've definitely been in situations where people are like what the fuck am i supposed to do with this because they know as well that they've only been with circumcised, uncircumcised people that, like, that whole thing is, like, it's pulling the foreskin up and right. down over the right. thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, This is, I cannot recommend this enough. I've used probably 30 different ones in my life, and I actually, like, this, this is Uber lube. Ah, it's not a German lube, even yeah. though it says that. It, and it is a silicone-based lube that will not destroy toys or stain your sheets, and, like, two, three drops, and it's, like, fucking the yeah. best. Like, it's not... It, the glycerin ones, like sugar based, are like they mm. get sticky. Like this is just fucking yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cannot I just have Jurex lube. Yeah, all right. This this did happen on the U-Bahn one day. It's <laughs> in the front. It, <laughs> I, I yeah. had in the front of my bag. Yeah. I had lube and I have hand sanitizer. Yeah, and I got onto the train. Yeah, after buying a ticket and touching the doors, I got to sanitize my hands. Yeah, I took out the lube, and I squirted lube into my hands. <laughs> And to sanitize my hands, and I it was only when I fucking did it, and I was putting it in the back in the bag, I was like, yeah. "Oh shit!" Yeah. And there was like people looking at me, and I was just like, "Oh, dude!" Like, like they could tell what had just happened. Like, they yeah, saw. they saw me squirt lube into my fucking hand. It's obviously lube. Oh yeah, because it was in like Jur. Well, maybe I don't know because it's in the blue Jurex, but unless yeah. I saw the Jurex label, <laughs> but like, like well, you're like, I'm just getting ready. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just- yeah, yeah. It's the U-Bahn. Like, it yeah, it's the U-Bahn. Someone sent me a video of uh, someone on the U-Bahn um st- like like sticking a dildo up their ass and jerking off at the same time mm-hmm. um and i've seen naked like old homeless dudes on the u-bahn once or twice um which is like super unsettling but um i'm fast you must have some stories from the whole escort i, I do and, and the thing is like i i have actually material on that that yeah. i used to do back in the day it's a really hard stand-up is such a weird thing because the audience well and actually i do want to talk to you about this if it's cool yeah because yeah. you deal with this to an extent yeah um the audience wants to know who's talking to them yeah, yeah and they yeah. want to form and an i they want to have like an anchor of who you are mm. and then from there is like how they assess your jokes that you're yeah, saying it's true yeah and so it's really hard for me to especially in like a fucking seven minute set mm. like when i've talked about it before i've i've done it in at least 15 mm. um i think I, the, the longest I've ever gone was like 43 minutes, but like mm. I, then I really dug into it in that one. Mm. Um, but like, it's really hard to be like, yeah, so I used to suck, suck cock for money. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. women, am I right? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like it's, 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 it completely. So whenever I do it, I have to do my like quote unquote straight material mm. up front yeah. and then get into the sex work shit because yeah. as soon as like, it's unfortunate but it really changes people's perception of you when they identify you as an alternative sexuality or whatever so like uh you know i'll even joke about like yeah and you know all you can think now about this microphone i'm holding is like a dick going into my mouth whatever like uh i can't do that other material up front and then go into my other stuff because they're framing like oh that's how a guy who's been with men would be with women or i mean maybe that's changing but like yeah, I think there's a whole um this whole sex work thing is in the last few years has become way more I think respect like it's not as it's not uh, the sex work thing that's the problem. It's, it's the sexuality thing, it, okay. which I do talk a lot about where like I, I mean like I'm not I'm not the right like I've said for my yeah. I'm not like the straightest straight guy, but like I'm not I'm not bisexual, like I'm You're not straight, gay. Yeah. And and I if anything if there's a taboo to get over it's the idea of like I would like it to be that you can do these things mm. and not have that be your thing yeah like I'd, i'm 
pretty certain every straight dude has done something gay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> either one, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. They mightn't ever talk about it, maybe to the therapist or something, but I think everyone has done something gay. Yeah. At one point well, in their life. So, because a, 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 a thing that, at least I haven't, obviously, I've only seen a few of your sets, but like, yeah. uh, you kind of almost have to establish for the audience that you're gay. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, I just think because. Yeah, like you said, when it's like a seven minutes, yeah, it, it's like, it's what it's true what you said. It's like, um, it's like it's nice for them. It's enjoyable as well for you to set up at the start. Like this is who I am. This is you know me, and then you can go go on from there. I feel like if I don't do that at the start of the set, I'm withholding this big thing. And it's like not even that it's a big thing, but it's like an integral part to the set because if I'm talking, because the whole the whole set might be about it and. Um, and it's just nice to like get it out of the way and kind of set that as a as a background because like I like you said I think it's like an important thing not important because some people want to go up there and just be that kind of shock jock thing and say horrible things but um, I think it is in a way important to be like uh, depending on your style to go up and establish like oh this is who I am blah 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 so then later on in the set when you say some fucking horrible things they're like we know this guy is a good guy and he's just fucking around here and he's just trying to say horrible shit that being said i go to the dark comedy open mic i establish nothing about being gay or who i am as a person because it, that doesn't matter because the people there just want to hear yeah. horrible shit they don't care who you are they just want to yeah. hear you say the worst possible stuff um so but it's gotten remarkably easier to say it on stage dude i, got, I was so fucking like i when i started stand-up i knew that like ck is like my fucking hero and I probably wouldn't be doing it without him. And um, I knew, like, if I'm going to do stand-up, it's going to be in that vein where it's, like, totally honest. Fucking no. And I knew when I started stand-up the first, like, month or two, I didn't say anything about being gay. I was terrified of doing it. And then... Were you out, day, like, to your... I was out, one? yeah. I've been out for years. Like, I started doing stand-up when I was 25. I've been out since I was 18. So it wasn't even that. It was, like... Because I'm not totally comfortable with it. I'm still working on it. Like, it's, I know, like, it, that's a long time to be, you know out of the closet and not still comfortable with it but it's uh i still have a problem with saying it actually stand-up has helped me with it a, a lot i used to have a real problem with like especially when you start a job where no one knows who you are or you meet new people for the first time and they just presume you're straight because they just presume i'm straight because like who wouldn't and then um i go the guys the guys like yeah. sucking your car you're straight yeah, right yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then they're like you know They'll just say something to you about women or just, oh, I see the tits on that girl over there, blah, blah, blah. And I used to have a real problem with being like, actually, no, like, I'm gay, you know, I'm not, you know, I used to have a serious problem with doing that because I just felt super uncomfortable doing it. But, and so I knew at some point, I was like, I'm going to have to talk about this doing stand-up, like, I'm just yeah. going to have to do it. And then just one day I just did it and it's gotten way easier to say it on stage, but it's still hard. Like, every time I know I'm coming up to that bit where I say it, I still get, like, butterflies in my stomach. Because it's not even butterflies. I'm just like, oh, here we go. I have to do this whole thing. And it's glad that I just get it out of the way because I just, something about saying it is just makes me uncomfortable. Well, so it's it's funny when I say it, I just go, yeah, I'm gay. And then I go, yeah, fuck you. And I just, then I get into the material. It's just like, I just need to get past telling them. Yeah. But I found since I've started doing that, I'm way more better at just telling people off stage that I am like if it just comes up in conversation where they're like oh so do you have a girlfriend or you have you when's the last yeah. time you fucked a woman a girl or whatever um I'm way more comfortable which is fucking a super awesome kind of uh side effect of doing stand-up is that you become a lot more comfortable with them um, with who you are but like you said we're saying about the sex work stuff is like um there's so much there when you're only doing seven minute sets it's like how do I even begin to scratch the surface there's there's so much i can just imagine there's so much material in that experience and like for example um like i went to uh, i went to north korea in 2018 on a trip and when i tell people that they're like dude you have to talk about that on stage and yeah. i was like how am i gonna even touch on that yeah in seven minutes yeah you know i'm gonna have to wait until i'm doing much longer sets to even go into that yeah thing because there's so much there i can't just go yeah so anyway, i was in north korea and just do like a minute on it and yeah. then fucking because it's impossible and I, yeah. I don't think i don't think i even i don't think i even have the skill yet to um 
turn the whole experience into a bit because yes some funny stuff happened but i want to get to a point where it's like i can kind of tell the whole story within a f- you know a period of time and make it a funny story but um i get that what you're saying is like it, there's some things that are just they're so big that you're like i can't possibly yeah. condense this into a five a five yeah. minutes out or a seven minutes out yeah or and for me it's like <clears throat> it's the i like a lot of my material and not uh, be, because I am motivated, motivated by it. Like I have a complicated relationship, I think with women, mm-hmm. like I, most of my friends are women, yeah. but then like, I f- have a lot of, I feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy and all this other kind of stuff. And so I want to be able to talk about that, mm. but it, it's just the way people's brains work. I think they're like, Oh no, you're actually closeted or you're, yeah, yeah. you know, okay. You, you know, you're by, I had this experience I talked about in here, but like fucking in Berkeley, like when I was, I was there a few months ago staying for a couple months and like in this hippie co-op and like this, you know, very queer friendly, all that stuff. And mm-hmm. this woman came up to me and she's like, so like, what's your sexual identity? Yeah. And I was like, um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I guess technically you could say queer, but I don't mm. like politically identify with what that always means. You mm. know, mm. Um, I'm like, I'm like a straight guy, but I used to be a gay for pay sex worker. And she's like, oh, okay. So you're bi. And I'm like, yeah, no, that, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not bi. Yeah. I, I was like, I mean, I can show you, I have a spreadsheet. I can show you like, yeah. whatever, like statistically I'm 99 point whatever. Yeah. And, uh, she, you know, I said, um, I'd usually honestly just tell people, I'm like, I'm down to party. Like I'll get weird sometimes, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, there needs to be enough drugs and at least two women in the room. And then, you know, we can yeah, get awesome. flexible, yeah. but like, uh, like, and she, she was so insistent upon knowing. She's like, oh, uh, this is the part I hate. She's like, no, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. But what are you? Yeah. And it's like, okay, so you are going to change your perception of mm. me based upon yeah. what my answer is. And she got so angry that I like wouldn't, like I couldn't give her a, a clear box to put yeah. me in. Mm. She literally stormed out of the room. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I just like, I, it, you know, like kind of this identity politics thing. And yeah. I, I hate that. So I think the audience, maybe not in like quite a malicious way like that, but like they are they're trying to figure you out mm. and it's just a lot to take in. Like if I said, I'm a gay guy who used yeah. to have sex with men for money, that's an easier thing. Yeah. To well, I get. think, I think your experience is so unique. Like I, if I was on, if I was in an audience and I heard someone say like, I'm straight, but I used to do, I'd be like, I'd be sitting up in my chair and be like, this is going to be good. Like, this is super interesting. Like, yeah. but it's so unheard of. Like, it's not like I've never heard anyone. I've never met anyone who did it. Yeah. And like, um, but as well, I don't like the fact that when I say I'm gay on stage, you get people and they're like, woo, like the women or whatever. Yeah. And you feel like they're giving you some grace with the stuff you say because mm. you're gay. They're yeah. like, oh, well, he can say that because he's, you right. know, which I fucking hate because yeah. like, I don't like that. I'm getting some kind of leeway in the stuff I say just because I'm fucking because of who I am. Yeah. Cause I've had shows where like I've said heinous shit Yeah. and I just know that they're giving me a free pass cause they're like, Oh, well, you know, he's, you know, he's one, like he's a minority, so we can't really, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, it's yeah. not like, don't fucking belittle me like that where it's like, um, and as well, I feel like I let them down because they, they, I say I'm gay and they're like, I just think so many people, are like first of all i can't stand people who make being gay their whole personality Mm -hmm. or anything people who make their whole uh, like their gender their personality or anything like that i can't fucking stand it um so i feel like when i talk start talking about being gay and then i start getting negative about it i'm like yeah it's not as fucking fun as it seems and i start talking about how i'm not comfortable with it and all i feel like it's um but then that's what people say is is an interesting take that uh, they like to hear but um the, yeah, so well like for you i mean from my perception which i you know whatever it is like yeah. obviously we're playing with stereotypes here and whatever mm. but like yeah you can say maybe there's uh typically like a way that someone would, would read as gay or whatever mm. and and that you don't exude those yeah. particular traits mm. uh that one would like think conversely apparently <laughs> I super exude them because I'm constantly like it, this literally happened two nights ago where I was out at a club. Yeah. There was this like British girl. I mean, we were fucking hammered, but like there was this British girl. I was at the bar. She came up to the bar. She mm. started like, I thought flirting with me, mm. you know, she was being very friendly and like, and then there's like this like old dude came taught. She's like, you need to help me out with this guy. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. we, you know, we're chatting for like five minutes and then it, or some person said, can I make out with you? Yeah. And she's like, but you're gay. 
Uh, and I'm like, no, I'm not. And yeah. she's like, yeah, you are. And I'm like, what the fuck are you? You're telling yeah. me like, I was like, and so I've, I've used this line. I've, it's happened so much that I've used this line before. I was like, cool. Mm. You ever made out with a gay guy? Yeah. Normally it's like, hey, cool. You ever fucked a gay guy? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah. I, so I had, I had, there was another, there was like a um, Australian guy. I didn't, he actually came to slips. I didn't realize that he was hitting on me. Okay. Um, and then he's like, oh, let's go to frickin' 3000 or whatever. Oh, it's like a sex club or something? It's, it's like a gay bar with like a dark room. No, you're going to say frickin' comedy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't, I, no, no. Um, but uh, eventually I figured it out and I was like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not gay. Mm. And again, like, he was like, what? No, he's like, he literally, he, he said, you're one of the gayest seeming guys I've ever met. And then I, mm. I did the whole, like, I was like, no, seriously, like the yeah, other day yeah, yeah. I went to the store and he's like, I think he was just being an asshole, but he's yeah. like, he's like, I can't tell the difference between how you normally act and what you're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck? I, I don't know. So it's almost like uh, where you have to kind of come out in, yeah. to the world or in your comedy. It's like, I have to come out as straight, straight to people, yeah. you know? Like, That's funny, man. Uh, yeah. That's funny, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I think, um, like, there's some guys who go on stage and they don't even have to say they're gay. They're just like, yeah, yeah so anyway, I was just doing this, whatever. And you're like, yeah okay they don't even have to say it but uh but um i still haven't figured out a way to say it in a funny way like when i say it now i don't get laughs i want to get a laugh when i say it but i I don't know how to yet but um yeah dude it's uh and then i didn't want everyone was like you know sometimes they're like oh you should go into that more and talk about that more and then i'm like i don't want to be the the, they're like oh that we like this the interesting angle of like someone who's gay but they're not like comfortable with it or they're struggling with it or whatever and i'm like yeah i understand that but i don't want to become the comedian who talks that that's his whole shtick is like oh he's the comedian who's gay and he doesn't like yeah doesn't like it or whatever so i try to like divide the set into like okay i want to talk about it a little bit here but i want to go into some other shit as well because i remember even talking to um another friend of mine who's a comedian who's black and he was like um He's like, oh, I'm sick of talking about being black and being black in, um, like, he grew up in Eastern Europe, which is, like, a primarily white uh, country, obviously. And he was saying he was just sick of doing material about growing up black in a white country and all this stuff. He's like, and I was like, oh, yeah, I totally get that. Like, I'm obviously not black, but I get the whole, like, you talking about a certain aspect of yourself. Yeah. That's, but even though that's a really interesting take, like, growing up black in a primarily white is a really interesting take, but, like, just get to a point where you're like i don't want to be that dude and you just get sick about talking about it like so yeah um that, that's what, when i've done longer sets like that's i i just think i have to be particular about what the order the structure of how i let information out mm. do you know what i mean um but dude there's like so much like i want to talk about fucking mental health shit there's so much stuff i want to talk about but you got a show to go to what time is it it's a uh, seven seven i can go another Bit. I think you should come back on another time. Yeah, and because I, there, yeah. dude, there you got so many great stories. Oh, like, dude, I was, could talk. I could do this for like another fucking few hours. Like, but yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, dude, this was, was a awesome. I fucking love talking to you. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, likewise, man, it was awesome. Definitely do it again. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, um, if people want to like follow you, what's all your shit? Uh, just um, Rob does comedy on instagram it's about it yeah i don't really have anything else do you have any shows or anything you want to um do, 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 do. It's monday um what am i doing Are this cosmic i think next showcase cosmic on you'll uh, post it on your instagram yeah i post everything on instagram so yeah if you cool. follow me on instagram will be yeah oh shit wait can't you have time for this is the first time i ever did this yeah a couple oh, people had, yeah a couple people, had people questions actually? For, yeah <laughs> okay so uh so, uh, Stephen underscore Fay wanted to know. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Stephen. He wanted to know okay. what, what Irish food you miss. Irish food. That's so funny that he'd asked that because I was expecting him to ask something really, really um, dodgy. Um, what Irish food do I miss? Fuck, I don't even know, man. Like. Not a country known for a particularly. Yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah, we don't have like quizzy, any <laughs> cuisine. What Irish food do I miss? I don't fucking know. No that's, corn, that's corn beef. Hash, he specifically hash. asked that to fuck me because like, um, such an obtuse. Like uh, I don't know, maybe like fuck. I don't know, man. 
Yeah, because there's no quintessential Irish food. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I don't know. Like maybe the Irish fry up eggs and sausages, whatever. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and then f- uh, Fergal Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Want to know why did you once make a painting of a terrifying refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> I actually t- oh man, I actually talked about this at a, a improv show, um, an improv show uh, during the week where some, someone uh, made it. one of the things in the book. It was uh, I want to make art for a living. Yeah. So I, I just went talking about I went to, I went to art college for, for three years. Ah shit! That's where I know Fergal. Fergal is a friend of mine from art college, yeah. and um, he's a super talented dude. Follow him on Instagram, Fergal yeah. Styles. Super super talented. Um, he uh, he yeah, I did art college, and I just I wasn't one of these guys who like they used to drill into you know like you should keep sketchbooks and notebooks and all this stuff, and I never had any interest in doing that. I just liked f- just painting shit. Like I wouldn't do any research or kind of like building i just paint shit and one day i just one day i was like i'm gonna paint a fridge so i just got a massive canvas that was like a few meters tall and i just painted a fridge onto it and i didn't put any thought behind it like it was just this is just gonna be a fridge and then we did like a presentation to the class yeah and uh and it was just hilarious just hearing the different people what their interpretation of it was yeah it's like oh yeah i think this is like a commentary on this or i think this is like uh-huh. supposed to convey this emotion and i'm just standing there like nodding like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's i literally was just like i'm just gonna paint this now so i let that's i think he's asking me that because he knows i don't have he knows i did it for no fucking reason like, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no i wish i had a met like a deep meaning to it when it was well that's the, even better is when you see people try to like impose their own meaning yeah on you see that a lot like, i don't know it should just be more acceptable like yeah i just painted this because fuck it why not like yeah. you know yeah. yeah 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 uh cool um for me follow me at eric on the world on instagram uh if you have questions well i'm gonna start doing this what i just did today i think that's way easier than having people email me um anyway yeah uh rob again thank you for being on thanks for having me man yeah so and um this is the th- i'm so self-conscious i gotta stop making this a preface with guests but anyway uh and no matter where you are in the world until next week be well and be loved yeah.